Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and uh, just so you know, if you're watching some of these videos and you don't realize it, we put out a video almost every single day of the week, so if you're on YouTube and you're not seeing the content even after you hit the subscribe button, uh, well, YouTube has this funny thing that whatever you looked at the most frequently or the most recently, I should say, they uh, will keep showing you. So if you enjoy coin content, but then you start uh, looking at the videos about how to make bat habitats, pretty soon your whole feed's gonna be with your little nocturnal friends and not with your, you know, owl loving friends. So just be aware of that. And also you can hit the notification bell after you subscribe and it'll go ahead and, and kick that back up into, into your feed. So on with the show. Uh, topic today has to do with the pluses and minuses of coin grading, and I just want to know what your stance is on how many grading uh, points we have and uh, how diverse it should or should not be. You know, um, I had a pretty interesting conversation with John Albanese uh, at CAC about the coin market and how we both like the old school verbal, where it was just unk, you know, bu, choice unk, gem, superb. So you actually had, you know, four or five main grades in uncirculated. Now there's technically 10. And so there's actually more grades plus you can get a plus or you can get, you know, a star or proof like. Well, proof like is probably a little bit different. Um, and then there's this yokel on YouTube who says, hey, why don't you have different grades for the front and the back of the coin since they look different? Right, I'm, I'm the crazy guy. So uh, you know, Harry says uh, that he does not agree with the two grade coins. Uh, imagine what that would do to establish any type of a price guide. Uh, think of how many price combinations there would be. Which would be the um, which side would carry the most influence? Far too confusing. Please. Uh, so I didn't, Harry. I'm sorry, I didn't see your other suggestion. By the way, he had mentioned to, to see the other suggestion. BL says, is there going to be a, an A++ grade, and what about a negative grade, and 65 plus minus, 60% nicer, he's got this whole thing. He was having some fun with me, I think, talking about some of the pluses and minuses uh, and stickering and all that stuff that you can get into. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, I, I prefer fewer grades, actually. So when, when NGC came out with their 10-point scale, which is really still a 100-point scale and not a 10-point scale, you know, I thought I'm a, like I think it's kind of cool, right? I mean, I would rather have fewer grades than more. Like I would rather have MS60 and MS63 and MS65 and MS67, right? So that gets back to Unk BU, Choice BU, Gem, Superb, it, it, much different, much different, right? So, and here I am going to talk out of both sides of my mouth I mean, for different reasons. Though I'll, I'll explain. I like that I like having fewer grades and making things a little bit more simplistic, as far as understanding the actual grade of the coin. And if you actually went to that grading system, I would I would dispel my crazy ideas about, uh, I would disband my ideas. I would get rid of my ideas. I would just, you know, whatever Harry Potter thing it is where you just take the idea out of my head and throw it away when it comes to having split grades. I just, because that grading system kind of felt more natural. In other words, you didn't have to split a 64, 63 because you really had better idea of what the coin was because there was no 64, if that makes any sense. So um, I want to know a little bit about where you guys fall on this as far as is the coin system, would you like it simplified or actually made more complicated? I'm going to defend my, my plus and minus grade, not my plus and minus, but my front and back obverse reverse especially to the point about price guides because here's my favorite thing about coins is when there aren't price guides i i so this is going to be like for all y'all who've got more of like the black and white engineering mind and being able to track things perfectly you want to be able to look at a coin and say this is worth exactly x amount of dollars based on what the holder says I, I hate that. I just hate everything about that. You know, that is what I call the commodification of the coin market. That someone can just pick up a coin and say, well, this is an MS63, therefore it's worth exactly $38.72. 
But that's not how the world really works. I mean, it's not like bullion. Coin collecting is not bullion it you know there's not a set spot price it's not trading stocks right it's a hobby it's for love it's for passion it's for enjoyment and so when you get a coin and you look at it and the coin can be diff two different grades like if coins are two different grades i wouldn't care because guess what the back and the front of those coins already are two different grades if you look at the coins they're not all the same this is the whole reason why cac has been able to get a foothold over the last 15 years they're not the same grade on both sides of the coin. If you look at 100 coins that are the same grade, they're all different. You, you cannot look at the coin and say, well, this is exactly this much money. I mean, it's just like looking at houses or, or cars. There's not an exact price. You can put all the algorithms you want into a spreadsheet and have it tell you what something is worth. But at the end of the day, it's what the buyer and the seller think it should be worth. Still, no matter what, you know, end of story, I rest my case. Get me a beer. I don't drink beer, but give me a beer anyways. Uh, so, okay. I got a little excited there. Watch out. So, the I like the idea of having people be able to determine their own value on coins because that's already what they do to some extent. A coin that has nice eye appeal will always sell better than a coin that does not. And you can have two different coins with the same grade and they're and they may technically be the same grade. Like I could look at them both and say, okay, I understand why this is a 63. I understand why this is a 63. But also, I'm going to take the one with the satin finish. I'm going to take the one with the PL finish. I'm going to take the one where the marks are hidden. You know, um, it, I'm going to take the one where the marks are on the back of the coin instead of the front of the coin. All of that is, is already a thing, right? I'm just, I, I'm just the guy who wants us to admit that it's a thing. And say to heck with the price guides that have exact grading. Sorry, John Feigenbaum. I, his, his job's hard enough trying to figure out how to get a price sheet that's somewhat accurate for everyone to, to reference, right? So where do you fall on the spectrum? Not necessarily just on the on the uh, two split grade systems, but do we have do we have too many grades? Do we have too few grades? Do you want a hundred point system? Do you want a verbal system? Don't think about what the system already is. Don't think about, well, how would we get from A to B? I'm just, this is all theoretical. Imagine there's no grading system and you don't have to replace something. That's not what I'm talking about. I just wanna know what you would do in your ideal world of coin collecting. What would you do? Give me, give me your grading system. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.